or um, God is redefining and altering uh, your nature. He's adding to some of us. He's taking away from others of us. And, and just by the countenance on your faces and, and me knowing you as your pastor, some of you are having a, a difficult time. Because what has been, God is shaking it. And what, what the status quo is, it is being interrupted. And who you used to call, you can't call no more. And what it used to be, it ain't that no more. And so many of us in the room are looking for a place of rest. In a place of comfort, in a, in a place where I can just let my hair down. Have you ever asked the Lord, when is this going to be over? Yes. I ain't got no help here. What, 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 I'm, I'm tired of when? Yeah. So there are many areas in our life that are being stretched. Your marriage, your relationships. I hope if you're on your phone that you're not on online. All right. All right. Streaming and scrolling. I want you to get this. But many of us in the room, every one of us in the room, there is a stretching happening in a particular area of your life. Can I give you about five of them? Your marriage, your singleness, with your children, your health, your money, your money, your money, your money, <laughs> uh, your sexuality, yes, you're in here, your temper, your money. We have another bit for the money. Do I hear another one for your money? <laughs> uh, your um, interpersonal skills, your communication, and some of us, all of the above. But I declare over you that you will not be destroyed. If you keep on living, you, you will make it through this. I have been in many stretch. I'm, I'm, oh God, many stretchings of the Lord. I have remembered one of the most intense ones where suicide, it seemed to be the uh, better way out. I've lived through it. And so all that you are experiencing your pastor, these, these pastors, these men and women of God up here on the front and in the back, we have experienced it too. And so I, I just want to be transparent with you this morning to, to let you know I'm feeling it too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm feeling it too. Uh, but the thing about the call of God, you just roll with me for about three minutes while I write right here. But the thing about the call of God is that those of you who have accepted and answered the true genuine authentic call of God that is on your life you yeah. do not have the option not to show up yeah. I'm not talking about even to this physical building but I'm talking about to the game yeah. I'm talking about when you get up in the morning and you feel the same pressures that an individual that gets to elect whether or not they keep pressing oh, yeah. on God when you have answered the call of God on your life and you know that there is a nation of people depending that you get to where you're supposed to be in God at a specific time, it helps you yes. to get up in the morning and see what the end is going to be. But if you ain't carrying nothing, if, 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 if your life is about you, you're for and no more. When you go through a stretching, it becomes easy to stay in the bed because you ain't got no nobody. You pulling up a train. But there have been times this week I've wanted to just say, hey, let's just meet at the nearest quick train. Let's just fight. Hey, let me just let's stop talking. Let's count. let me just come from behind this collar and let's just arm wrestle. Let's let's play uh, uh, a full contact football. I haven't even, let's just let's let's stop talking and let's just fight. I ain't never been there before. I mean, let's just let's 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 just settle it. But but but. Uh, you know what the Lord said to me the other day? Uh, I, I'm teaching. We, we, we're entitling this message. This is the last message of the stretched series. I want to talk about the processes of the Lord. The processes of the Lord. Tuesday night, we're going to dive into dealing with uh, understanding prophetic people. The woes, the advantages, the disadvantages, disadvantages, the benefits, uh, and the cons to being prophetic. So this is going to be a prelude to that. We're going to close stretch, and then we're going to deal with prophetic people. All right? All right. Now, what was I saying? Stretch, front creature. So, okay. Thank you. I just had to hear it back. Don't laugh at me. Don't, don't do it. I'm too young to be forgetting. I'm in the Holy Ghost. The Lord said to me the other day, it was last week. He said, you're a professional. Uh, 
God told me. If I haven't had any doubt out there, none of you look good. I don't care how you look, I'm a professional. I have a licensure in God, and I got papers. I can marry and bury. I'm a professional at my craft. I've been doing it for 10 plus years. I got hours of whole hours in this thing. Prophet Andy, you're a professional. Professional. And anybody in here, whether your profession, whatever it is that you do, are you are there any professionals? Don't, 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 no, come on, don't, don't be, see how y'all, you know, like, if you're a professional, I want you to put your hand, because I'm a professional. Come and see your hand, come on, throw it up, let me count the professionals. What, what you, what's, your, what's your profession? Brand ambassador, all right, T, what's your profession? Vet tech, you had your hand up, what you do? All right, what, who another professional in the room? Uh, y'all, project manager. Come on, say master organist. <laughs> Chief organist, 24 years. Man, you had your hand up. What you do? Investigate. DHS, child welfare. Invest. What you do? What you? What you? How you do that thing? Medical billing. Give me another professional. Brit. You who somebody called Brit? Come on, where the put? Don't be shame. Theology. All right. Mother, my, mother, mom. Caregiver. Yes. What you? All right now. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Now I like that. All right. Because the Bible says that, that, that if any one of you desire to be great, let him first. Oh. Uh, hey, will you, real quick, I'm going to wait on you. Go get me like three brooms. A mop, a mop, uh, um, three things that got handles on. Just, just real quick, because I'm going to wait on you. So you got to run. Listen. When you are a professional, when you are professional, you don't get to go live on your phone and cry and go off and be petty. When you are a professional, there is a poise and a put togetherness and a maturity and a standard on those of you that are professional. Let the professionals arise. You are being stretched to, to improve your professionalism. Yeah. Pastor Water, you're a professional. So what would, what would make a novice fall apart when you're a professional? It is par for the course. So I, I, my personal ministry, I told you Tuesday, I'm going to keep telling it is a national ministry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so for seasons uh, previous to now, I have intentionally not done things to promote my ministry because I was not prepared professionally to enter into my craft. Because there's a part inside of me that still fight. Yeah. Well. So I, said, I don't want to, you know, y'all yeah. <laughs> see me fighting somebody at the restaurant for talking crazy. They're going to say, class past it. And some of y'all going to say, I understand. I mean, and then some of y'all gonna say, man, you go to the gates. <sighs> Just hold us for a second. I might not use because I didn't move. So say, I'm a professional. If you guys say, I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Come on, say it like you really say, I'm a professional. So professionals don't get the luxury uh, that novices get. When you're a professional, you just got to stand up underneath some stuff and just take it and just keep moving and let the Lord deal with the rest. You can't buck, buck um, up underneath the prayer. Who? Tell them what a novice is. Oh, uh, yeah. A, a novice is an individual that's still trying it on. Yes, sir. Come on now. Still in training. You're in training. Uh, uh, MIT. Any of y'all ever been to MIT as ministers in training? Yeah. MIT. So you trying it on. This feels. Oh, Lord is rough. Yep. The Lord ever let you prophesy and you be accurate. You ever had a dream and then your dream manifested and you was like, yeah. right? This is this is gonna go with the content. Uh, you ever prayed for somebody and you wasn't believing that they got healed and, and on accident? <laughs> and, and they say how you say, well, how you feel? Just expecting them to say, you know, I believe God. And they say, I feel bad again. And you say, wow. It worked. Remember on, on Home Alone, he swiped that card. He was his daddy's card, and she swiped it for he said, Wow, it worked. So. God will let you and I in your infancy of whatever sphere 
of influence that you were called to, he will let your ability work prematurely or before it's time yeah. to show you that it's real. Yeah. <laughs> Bishop uh, T.D. Wow. Jake says that God will show you your potential. Yeah. He'll let it shoot up and then he'll let it disappear and then he'll snatch all that God has called you to be. He said that he writes it on a piece of paper. What you will be, your potentials, and what you will accomplish, and what you will achieve, and he shows it to you on a piece of paper, and then it comes up and it shoots right back down, and then somebody takes that paper, and God runs off with what your abilities are on a piece of paper for you to chase it. So you spend the rest of your life chasing the Lord to fulfill the thing that he's put you in the earth to accomplish. So in the season of a novice, it is to show you that what is on your life is real and it, it is authentic. Yes, sir. The only reason I'm still standing behind this pulpit, in this city, in this church, uh, among this people, because God has established me here. Yes, sir. And I will not move until he. Come on. Yes, sir. So whether we and me and her stay together or not, whether my children get sick, whether my body is afflicted with illness, I'm going to stay on the post that God set me on. I'm a, because I'm a professional. So I know how to preach with money in the bank. And I know how to preach with no money in the bank. And I know how to preach uh, when things are going well. And I know how to preach when things are not going well. I know how to preach under a broken heart. And I know how to preach when everything is going right. I know how to preach to a room full of people. And I know how to preach to four. The, 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 the anointing doesn't change it. Right. So when I'm a professional, I can do it and keep on pushing no matter what I see. Why? Because the Bible declares that I walk by faith. Yes. 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 Not by sight. Someone say, I'm a professional. Come on, say, I'm a professional. So those of you that, that have not yet had the, the amount of time to put in to become a professional, ain't nothing wrong with it. Just keep living. Just keep uh, waxing on. And waxing off because Mr. Miyagi told the karate kid, karate kid said, I want you to teach me karate. And Mr. Miyagi said, all right, first order of business is we're going to go out here to these cars and we're going to put wax on them. And you're going to put the wax on and you're going to take the wax off. Novice. The karate kid, novice. We want greatness, but he's novice. So what the Lord did is that he hid his greatness in the ability to discipline himself. He hid greatness in his ability to stay on track. He hid the discipline. He hid greatness in the discipline and consistency of them raggedy cars. It was never about the cars. It was always about him teaching discipline first. If you're going to learn karate and if you're going to learn ministry, you're going to have to learn the art of serving who? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so uh, I'm, I am all that I am gifted in the Lord, but, but primarily, foundationally, I'm a student. I'm a servant. Yes, sir. Somebody say, I'm a servant. I'm a servant. What, the, what, what Mr. Miyagi was teaching him, he was teaching him karate in the waxing on and in the waxing off. Go back and watch the movie. The move to wax on and the move to wax off was a was a was a move in karate. So because he had he had the discipline down, there was more that could be built on his skill level because he had already practiced it in the in the in the car yard. Woo. David is another example for those of y'all that are biblical scholars in the room. He, he, was, he was cool with his slingshot because he understood uh, what his role was to protect the sheep, his father's sheep. So he was cold-blooded with his So when he, listen, when he got his shot, literally, when God gave him his shot, he was already perfected. But somebody said it didn't start there. It didn't start there. So when I get to where I'm going, when this house gets to where it's going, when, when Bishop and those of you others who are gifted and call of God, in whatever sphere of influence you are called to when you get there. Please know it didn't start there. Where did it start at? Somebody say right here, right now. Where I'm at right now. That's where. All right, let's go. Give me, I got two scriptures for you. When they, um, 
R&B artist and soul artist and rock artist and all these other different type of gifted people that we see. I like to watch, uh, when I'm at the gym, the different um, sports industries and different, different sports that comes on while they play it because these people are at the top of their craft. I like to watch soccer players that are professional. I like to watch basketball players, both male and female, that are professional, golfers that are professional because there's just something smooth about them. Kobe Bryant says that when, when he's in the zone, he hears no one else. Some of us literally. But what, what he said is that I can't hear the crowd. It is me against my opponent. Anybody who functions at any level of greatness, there is, a, there is a time and space that you must get to where you cannot be distracted by what others are or are not doing. But when you are at the top of your craft, when you are on the way to the top of your craft, the distraction of, of, of people's behavior, you've got to learn how to move through it. Can I tell you why? Because it is a distraction. Your friendship drama that's going on, it's a distraction. It, it is a, I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying what has happened, what has not happened, have not hurt you. But it is a distraction to dwell on it. Because there's greatness in you. Some of us, oh, we are distracted by stuff that is not going anywhere. You shall hope. That's what the old saints say. You shall hope. Okay. Galatians 3, 23. Let me cut across the field. Is this helping you? Is anybody in here in a process? No, I mean like a real show enough. This is... Yeah, I, 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 I got a degree in process. Anybody be in process? Be in process. In the same light, if you, if you really, I mean, if you really, now there's some people who like date God. You understand? Sundays and Wednesdays, Sundays and Tuesdays, God. I, I went to church today. But for those of you that keep up with him, uh, you know, when the scriptures, when the song said he walks with me, y'all don't know that type of relationship, and he talks with me, and he tells that that kind of closeness with the Lord, uh, uh, it seems like after you come out of one, you go right into another one. And sometimes he have you in two at the same. Can I help your mind? Can I help your mind? There is greatness. There is greatness on the inside of you. You stay in a process because there is a particular quality that you must have to get where you're supposed to be. I don't know if I can say it twice. There is a particular quality. There's a particular... Uh, see, okay, we buy steaks from Sprout. Brittany buys her steaks from Sprout. So the steaks, are, the, the ribeyes are probably like $9 or so, depending on their own sale. So I said, well, I was at Walmart. And I saw some ribeyes in a box. <laughs> All the cooks in the room, you already know where I'm going. And so they had like 10 of them in a box for like $10. I, I called Brittany. So we like, cooks is like, don't do it, don't do it. So I see some of the room, I said, I called her, I said, hey. We've been paying $10 for a steak and they got 10 for 10 in a box. She said, don't you do it. That's scrap meat. That's <laughs> Now, for all the people that came through the struggle, you looking like, so what's, where they at? What's, what color is the one? The single people that, that can't cook, like, where are they, where, where they at? <laughs> but, <laughs> I ain't gonna call nobody out. Uh, but, there was a particular quality. Quality. There's a particular quality that is being produced in you that if you get off of the off of the powder's wheel now, listen, 
you go, you might get to where you're trying to get to. You might, I'm talking to those that are in the room, you might get to where you're trying to go. But Brittany baked a cake the other day, and we're still trying to figure out what happened to it. The outside was done. But when she took it out of the oven to let it cool down before she iced it, the inside fell through. So the outside was done, but the inside was wrong. The outside is done, but the inside is wrong. I said, what you just need to do is you just need to give me that, that raw. I like that big cookie, though. I'm a, I'm a dough, dough head. You just give me that raw, and we just going to nibble. Uh, I, I, I should live in that day. The outside was done, but the inside was wrong. So if you get off of this God process that, you, that he has you in now, the outside is done. You, you look good on the outside, but your inside is wrong. Yeah, you, 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 you got a little tinge of mean in there that God don't want you where he, he sent you with that tinge of Bishop Noah Jones said, I'm too flawed to be uh, famous. I'm too flawed to be. So God has extended my obscurity, this ministry's obscurity for a season to make sure that the inside was cooked. But I heard the Lord say he's ready now. Uh, for those of you that have been in the process of the Lord, that you've been in one and out of another, the Lord said, I'm going to give you what it is that you ask. I'm going to release it to you. So, 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 the, so the book that is in your spirit, the business that is in your spirit, he said to us that everything that you have, the faith and the discipline, everything that you have, the faith and the discipline for, it is yours. So according to your faith, somebody say, it is mine, it is mine, it is, it is mine, it is mine. Yeah, uh, according to your faith, everything that you have the faith and the discipline for. You can't, you can't, you can't drive a Lexus and not change the oil on a Lexus. You got to have, you got the faith for a Lexus, but did you have less of Lexus discipline? So every level requires another level of discipline. Yeah. Say, be it unto me. Be it unto me. Now let's roll. Let's, let's get into the scripture. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. We're going to read Galatians 3, 23, all the way to Galatians 4 and probably 3. Right? Don't get online. Don't scroll. Don't do it. So when we get to when we have the word, we're gonna have the, the word on the screen. There ain't gonna be no reason to. <laughs> Somebody said we going there. We going there. Just hold on. I got Bishop on board with a couple of things that's under my sleeve. So yeah, yeah we go in there. We get ready to turn it out. Okay. So for the next six months, we are intentionally pushing and driving as a church family. So you're gonna see some things changing, some things happening. So uh, it's a good season. All right. Read with me before a little bit. Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. It says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up into the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Did you see that? Yes. Verse 24 says, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. This is going to be so good. The law was our schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. Listen, what's the purpose of the schoolmaster? He says, to bring us unto Christ. That we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. <laughs> Lord. Verse 26 says, for you are all the children of God by faith in who? Christ. In Christ Jesus. This is key. Say, in Christ Jesus. 27 says, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So I used to hear the older generation around me say, if you keep on messing with me, you're going to make me lay this religion down and do what I need to do concerning you and then pick it back up again. But when you have been shall I, baptized in Christ, the word picture for baptized in the Greek 
the, the word picture is as of a vessel to be let down into the depths of the ocean to be filled in every corridor so that there is no space in this vessel that is dry, completely, utterly submerged. Somebody say soaked, drenched, no dry anything. The Titanic has been under the ocean for uh, over 50 years. Is that about right? Huh? I, I just wanted to be safe. All right, I didn't study it. 107. He a professional. That's why he know. That's his head. So there is is there a dry spot in the Titanic? You know why? Because it's been baptized. Oh God. It's been baptized. Now this is key. Keep stay with me. For as many of you that have been baptized in Christ Jesus have put on Christ. So uh, really when you get this thing right, when you when you really been baptized, ain't no taking them off and putting them on. Amen. There ain't no laying it down and picking it up. You know why? Be because he's no longer on me, but he's in me. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon an individual. But in the New Testament, he filled us from within. In the Old Testament, you would hear, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon. But after he, 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 he died, and after he was rose again, and the meeting between God, all of that was done with, uh, uh, he now filled us from the inside. So when you really got this thing, down right, uh, there ain't no taking him off. God. Uh, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. We ain't got to tell you yet. The body, we ain't got to tell you yet. We still... Verse 29 says, and if you be Christ's ownership, belong to him, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Whew. That's a reason to give him praise. If you understand what the promise is, that's gospel. That's good news. Okay, now go over to verse... Four. I'm sorry, ver, uh, chapter four. Verse one. I got to get there. Technology. Okay. Galatians 4 1. He's still, even though it's a new chapter, he's still continuing the same thought. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Verse one says, Now I say that the heir, as now he just. In the, in the previous verse, he just told them that if they're in Christ, they've been baptized, that they have an inheritance. They have a promise. Is that right? Yeah. The Abraham seed. Now he's going to give a qualification to ascertain this promise. Yeah. This is where I want to park at for the remainder of this content. I think I'm going to be through. Because the fight against you is this don't you do it the 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 the, 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 the war mm -hmm. the process that many of us are in is how do i uh walk in what has been promised to me my inheritance mm -hmm. i'm going to give you a process concerning that i hope this makes sense galatians 4 1 says now i say that the heir as long as he is a child. We're talking about maturity. We're talking about a quality on the inside of you. Or professionalism. A, a knowing and understanding of who you are and, and, and who God has placed you around. Bishop told the church in uh, Oklahoma City 
referring to myself for, for example, he said, I, I have never had a problem out of him. He said, he's my pet. People be looking like, well, he young, he the pastor. And I'll be like, yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So he said, I've never had a problem out of John because, he, listen, this is for you. He knows his place. So what I am doing at the level that I'm doing it at, uh, the blessing of the Lord that, that is on my life yeah. and that I'm living in, a, a large portion of that has to do with me understanding my placement. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about I not only know what, what my function is, but I also know the role and the function of those that God has placed around me. Right? right? It says, though he be a, uh, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs, listen, nothing from a servant or a, a paid um, a, a paid individual in a household. So we're talking about an estate. Yeah. We're talking about people who work for the head boss that, that maintain the yard, maintain the kitchen. Those would be, he would call servants. You listen? So what he's saying is that an individual that is a child, they differ nothing from the servants, although the estate belongs to the child. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? Yes, sir. So let's say if, if, if um, I have a cleaning business called Cleans, King's Cleaning. All right. So that's a, it's a million dollar business. Mm -hmm. And I hire uh, uh, Blake. Blake would be a servant underneath my establishment. Yes, sir. And I, I say to John, in my will, this company will be yours. Mm -hmm. Now, it's John's inheritance, and he's over Blake, but he's not to the age of maturity to function in that yet. Blake makes more than John because John ain't even in the company yet, but it's already been written that it's John's. So he's an heir according to the promise. What's the promise? The promise is you get all of this. So that's what he's saying in verse 1. Now I say that the heir, which would be little John, as long as he is a child, he differs nothing from Blake. Though he be little John, Lord of all the servants who I've hired. You got that? Yeah. Listen. But. Somebody say, but. But, but is under tutors and governors. That's where some of us are this morning. The time and place in your life. You got greatness on the inside of you, but but God has assigned to you governors and tutors. The Bible talks about the laying on of hands. I believe it was Moses laying hands on. Uh, uh, who, we have not gone this way before. Uh, who Joshua? Joshua. Uh, um, Apostle Meadows says that. The laying on of hands is one of the fastest ways to receive impartation. And so what he likened it to, come here, is that, is that Moses, squat down a little bit. I'm going to take the raise up in a second. What, what he likened it to, and I believe that this is appropriate for this content, that the laying on of hands, every time the gift in Joshua would begin to uh, grow or develop faster than his character, the laying on of the hands of Moses, stand up. What, what's that? It's not your time yet. Hiya! Rise up again, you feel, uh, not, not yet. Not until what is the weakness in you has been dealt with. Not until, not until the tweak in you that God sent you to me to get out of you, God will not release him to his greatness. Until, stand up, until that thing has been uh, scraped out of him. Come on now. I hear you. I'm talking to every person in this room. Yes, sir. 
There is an area of, of your life that God, he's using this process to purify a motive issue in some of us, a temper in some of us, a rejection, a, an abandonment, a projection issue, a trauma that needs to be healed. And what the, Lord, what the Lord has said is, I can't release you to your full greatness until that thing has been removed. You know what will happen because you'll be in your palace at the time that kings are supposed to be at war and you'll see the thing that God tried to get out of your spirit across the way and you say, I got to have it. I got to have it. Thank you. I got to have it. And, and if that thing has not been killed on the inside of you, you'll destroy everything that it took you 10, 20, 15, 30 years to build. So your process is not to frustrate you. It is, it's, not to, it's not to kill you. It's, it's not to, to, to destroy you. It's not to make you. But it is to protect you. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. For your own self. Yes, there was a show on MTV that used to come out called May. Called May. M-A-D-E. May. And, and I love the show because the show was about these, these, uh, uh, these young people who had dreams and aspirations to be famous made and so what MTV would do would send someone who was a governor or a tutor or a skilled individual in the industry that they believed that they were called to be great in show was called made so what they would do is they would say okay if you want to rap let me see your material remember on the five Harveys Dressing them, they thought they was better than the old school. And he said, well, you think you got what you, you think you got what you, th let me see the best combination. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I was taught to watch a movie. You're going to watch a movie, watch it in the Holy Ghost. If you're going to kill time, then at least open your ear, open your eye. So, old man, so I said, show me your best combination. He said, all right, old man, so let me dress him. He was, he said, come on, dress him. <laughs> And the old man said, just what I thought. That you ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't He said, hold my cane. And then the man came over with the bed. <laughs> and you know what he found out? What Dresser found out is that although he is old, he still got something on it that I don't know about. So it's called made. And what the old man was telling them, y'all ain't y'all ain't got what you think you got, although y'all Negroes can sing. Yeah. Is there anything on the inside? Yeah. Or will you be outside of your dressing room cracked out, Eddie? Yeah. <laughs> so they, they were famous, but they were half-baked on the inside. Yes, so the story became less about their singing and more about their character flaws. Yeah. So the show is called May. I'm getting excited. The show is called May. So the, so the man said, okay, I'm a record exec. We're going to sign you if you can make it through this five-week process. So the girl, the man said, I want to be May. I want to be May. So he come to the house and get up at 5 a.m. What you get me up at 5 a.m. for? Because you said you wanted to be May. So everybody's at the lunchroom eating cookies and ho-hos and Twinkies. You need to eat salad. Because your physical body can't handle the strain of you being on rap tour. So now we got to alter and address and govern your eating. Y'all yeah, yeah. don't like this. But if you want to be made, then every area that, that will be pulled on in your area of expertise, it got to be under scrutiny. I'm losing my crowd. So, 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 so they take them to work out. And they say, they say now... Now, now, wrap the rap while you run on the treadmill and don't, don't miss a lyric and don't miss timing. What? All at the same time. Why? Because if you're going on tour and you got to do choreography and sing and rap at the same time, ain't nobody going to pay to see you sweating, sweating out your costume, <laughs> out of breath. <laughs> So we're not going to waste money to invest in you. Oh. Do you want to? And so they were asking, do you want to be? Ask your neighbor. Tell them, say, do you want to? Oh, come on. Do you want to? I'm too old to do that. 
Do you want to be made? I want to be made. Let me finish this. There is another level. Listen, listen, listen. There is another level. I don't even want to say money because it's not just money. There's another level of resource that is now available and ready for you. Mm -hmm. There is no money shortage in the earth. Let me say it again. I ain't talking about what the news told. I ain't talking about what you've seen in North Tulsa, East Tulsa, West Tulsa. There is no money shortage. I'm going to say it one more time. There is no money shortage. Concert ticket sales are doing just fine. Now we owe Sally, I want to choke Sally May out there. We owe Sally May. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, 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 this society, many of us don't own our vehicles. Many of us don't own our home. So there is a, there is a money management crisis that we are in, we're in a, a, a financial oppression but concert, set, concert ticket sales are, are high why is that? because we still going to do what we want to do to enjoy ourselves y'all, y'all it don't matter how bad times get you're going to find something to do to your hair oh y'all yeah, you ain't going to be having to walk around with your toes it don't care it, it, <laughs> It don't matter how bad it is. I'm not going to be around. I got a quality about myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. You're in the house. But so there is no shortage of money. So, so what's, the, what's, the, what's the disconnect? It's in whose hands it's in. That's right. You're right about it. Did you hear what you said? It's in whose hands. The wealth of the wicked is laid up. Just it's laid up. Well, if it's just laid up, man, we can just boom, 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 boom. We go again. No, 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 no. There is a a code. There is a a, a a vetting process that qualify you and I to be the just. The Bible says that the just shall live. Is that the same word, just? Am I right? The just shall live by faith. Let me finish this. Under governors and tutors until when? Until the time appointed of the Father. Woo! Now then, I'm going to read this to you from the commentary. I think I'm going to stop. But it says the word tutors here is adopted by a Jewish law unto their language. By the former, it is used for any ruler or governor. Just keep listening. Silver or domestic. And by the latter, for such as guardians. Listen of infants so my son and my daughter when we get ready to go I say get dressed go to the car these jokers I don't know what, it's just guess the age that they in they start sitting in the driver's seat now so I come out with my stuff get ready to go run some errands hit some corners and, and, and she's sitting in the driver's seat with the car off I said we got to go man Whoa. so I want to drive daddy so her, she's becoming aware of transportation of her surroundings. She knows what light we turn at. The, she'll know whose house we're going to. So she's, her, her awareness is elevating. It's kicking up. So she wants to drive now. She asked Brittany this morning, I want to wear a summer dress. <laughs> what is a summer? She said, a summer dress is a dress that's flowy. And has butterflies or flowers on it. I want to wear a summer dress. So Brittany said, well, you can wear a summer dress, but you got to wear legs under it because we're still trying to make sure you keep your legs closed when you sit down. So until you can learn legs closed, you have to wear leggings under your summer dress. And somebody said, that ain't right. Wait till you get a child. So <laughs> under governors and tutors. Listen, let me keep reading because it gets better. We do not appoint a tutor or a guardian for a bearded person. Did you hear that? This is what the law says out of this context. They do not assign a governor or a tutor to a bearded person. What this is likened to is a person that is full age, mature. So if we are in Christ and the, and, 
And we are heirs according to the promise. Why do we need a governor and a tutor? Why do you need a governor and a tutor? If you're grown, you can go as long as you want. I'm anointed and I'll probably, hey, you, you, you all that you are. What is the purpose of a governor and a tutor? You know what the purpose of a governor and a tutor is? Uh, the purpose of the governor and a tutor is for an individual that the spirit of the Lord is not their government. That's to me. I'm going to stop. An individual, so in, in physical, they're bearded. But in the spirit, they're mature. So bearded in the natural is I'm full grown age, whether you're male or female. It's I'm a full age. I'm mature. In the spirit, it is likened unto I have the internal government to stop when I need to stop. Come on now. I don't need someone to tell me to go and apologize. When the Spirit of the Lord has convicted me of my wrong. I wish I had a church in here. When the Spirit of the Lord is my government, I don't need to be openly rebuked because God has already dealt with me in my prayer time. When the Spirit of the Lord is my government, I now need no one on the outside to, 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 to yield me. To steer me, to direct me, because the principle is already on the inside. David said, "Thy word have I have I hid it in my heart." You know what that means? What he was talking about in the Hebrew, or is it in the Hebrew? He was talking about his kidneys. When he said, "Thy word have I hid in my heart," when he no no when he says, "You desire truth in the inward parts." Yes, sir. If you research that, he's talking about his kidneys. Why the kidneys for five nurses? Because the kidney is the deepest organ in your body. So what David figured out after he made his mistake because he didn't let God get with it when he was in the sheep shed is that I got to have truth so deep down in me that no matter where I go, I can never get away from it. So one of the processes that God is doing in you and my life right now is you may get there and still have your glitch. You know, you, you pop off every now. That, that may be able to ride. Depending on what placement you fit in the body. Oh, I, just give me three more. Depending on your placement in the body would determine whether or not what glitch can stay and what, what has to go. Give me the book. So, if my next level, hold this right here. If my next level is here, and, and you're going to lift this up when I'm ready. You have to toe get. You ready? You're going to say, Doo. So, if what is in me, if what is in me cannot go to the next level, if God won't permit it, then I might be here for five years. I might be here for three years, for four years. I may be here for four marriages. I, I, may be, I may be here at five different churches. I may be here at three different spiritual fathers, four different spiritual mothers. I, uh, it, whatever you want to put in your life, I may be here for however long it stays in me. Because in God, this is what the Lord told me. I think what he told me. He said, I'm not releasing anybody. I'm not releasing anybody to my body. I'm not releasing anybody to my body to minister to them that have not been through appropriate process. Now, if they get there, it ain't because I sent them. So in God, under governors and tutors, I might have to stay here until that thing is worked out in me. So until I pay the toll, until yes, Lord, yes. becomes the prayer of the season, this ain't going to move. Yes. I didn't been here. I told Bishop one time, this is come, I said, this is some, ooh. Yes, sir. Just, where is this going? Yes, sir. We talked, and after we talked, I fell a little bit, but I'm like, my, and, and then let me, 
this is the thing about so this everything. This thing about social media for, for the millennials in the room. The woe to social media is that it's saturated with too much exposure. Some of y'all ain't never thought about going overseas until you saw somebody else's ugly toes in the sand. Now you bothering God about going overseas and you didn't have no PTO to go overseas. We going anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Now I ain't, I ain't mad at you. I'm just saying. You listen. You saw something. You saw something that is a level, but it may not be your level now. I don't like me. Uh, 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 uh. Who wouldn't want to be married to somebody that's wealthy yeah. financially? Yeah. But your husband may work a nine to five. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody ain't gonna marry an entrepreneur. That's right. Your husband may, may drive the bus and make twenty one dollars an hour. And you are the tough of the But we didn't see the way that these superstars live. You didn't see five cars in the driveway. You didn't see the wraparound porch. And now you're dissatisfied with where God has you in compared to a wicked person. Can I tell you? God, I'm through. Let me stop because they get mad. So until I pay the toll, until it comes out of me, in God, I'm going to be right here. I just got, Bishop just released me the other day. I mean to really push my public ministry online. Amen. I've been pastor for what, 10 years? 12 years? He just released me. Because yeah. there was a season I got to I got to brand myself. I need some headshots. And, and Bishop said, well, what you doing that for? Why are you posting all that? Why are you posting all that stuff online? All that what, what, yeah, he said, he said, now if you're going to do it, you need to do it about once every couple months. And let people see it and then go back into hiding. Ooh, this is helping somebody and somebody just in here itching to burn. He was like, go somewhere and sit down. I've been, I, this is my full time vocation. This is what I, I didn't got nothing on the side. This is what I do. Go somewhere and sit down. Ooh, I was pissed off. Oh, God. You, you, oh, you understand? This is in my heart. You, oh, you hold me back. People writing books and doing conferences and book signing, and you got there here on Maplewood fooling around this church. Oh, yeah, you know, it's in your heart, too. We sing the same time. We go to rehearsal, all of that. You in the right house, preacher? I've been waxing on and waxing off for over 10 years. I ain't new to this, but I'm. I've been waxing. Been waxing. Waxing on and waxing. I just got ready. I did. So if I just got ready, I'll be with the man Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. You ain't know. <laughs> In the area of ministry, you ain't ready past me. Now some of you that will call to God, you going back to what? I, I, what I'm saying is that. God knows how far to pull the arrow back before he releases it. Yes, sir. And depending on, oh, this is the Holy Ghost and I got to be through. Depending on how far you're going, would it be, would be dependent on how, how far back he got to pull it. Yes, so when you're being stretched, yeah. God got to pull you back yeah. before he release you. Amen. Yeah. I declare over your life yeah. that God is getting ready to release you based off of your faithfulness. Somebody say, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. Yes, sir. Touch your neighbor and say, go and be great. Thank you. Say, go and be great. And remember the Lord. The thing about suffering appropriately is I can't go crazy. You need to hear me what I mean. Because I have suffered appropriately. I ain't talking about crossing every T down and every I, but I have suffered yeah. appropriately. <laughs> Can I tell you what I mean by that? So when 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 Brittany and I's first child passed away, she was a stillborn. You hear Bishop talk about Jalen all the time. I sacrificed. I, I I said yes to the Lord concerning that for the price of ministry. Amen. 
So if if I go crazy one day and get famous, and y'all said mm, that, 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 that ain't that ain't his spirit. He <laughs> that ain't mm -mm, that all that that ain't that ain't that ain't Pastor John. I know. And then God got to send you to come fire me preaching on the road for you to tell me in my ear, go back to your first love. I don't want to hear that word. So because I've suffered appropriately, all God got to do is just remind me of what it costs to get to. After you have suffered a while, then he will exalt you. So the purpose of an altar, listen, the purpose, prophetic people, the purpose of your process and the, pr the purpose of your suffering is for you to mark that God required this of me so that when you get to where you're going, you don't lose your mind. Yes, sir. Somebody say, I suffered right. I suffered. Come on, say, I suffered right. I suffered right. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I know too much about God to be around here mistreating my wife. She get on my nerves, I get on hers at times, but, but you'll never know. I'll never come to you talking crazy. What? No! Mess! Because I suffer right. When you suffer right, crazy ain't an option. And I'm not talking about mental disorder. I'm talking about going off. Uh, uh, talking crazy to those that, no. Not when I've suffered, right? It costs you too much to get where you are. I need to say one thing and we're going to pray. We're going to prophesy. Um, we were at home. Only way, I'm not here on a Sunday. This footnote is if I'm out of town with Bishop or her and I are on a getaway, if I'm preaching somewhere else, more more often with Bishop or me and her is still the way. So suddenly we at the hotel waiting for the evening service for the um, uh, healing and deliverance revival in Oklahoma City. So I'm laying in the bed and it's, I felt led to, to, to Oprah had, had to do Soul Sunday, Super Soul Super Sunday. Soul. So there was, a, there was an older gentleman on there. He was talking about the universal Christ. And he was giving some good nuggets and some thought-provoking, you know, my kind of stuff. But he said somebody asked him, how long should you pray a day? How long should you pray a day? He said, you know what, let me think about that. He said, there, there's no set time that everybody should pray right. in a day. He said, what I believe, and this is what I want to share with you by the leading of the Spirit. He said, you should pray until your prayer becomes yes, Lord. Oh, God. That's right. Oh, God. Woo! I just, just, that's all I need to hear. Just turn it on. I turned it off because I don't want to hear nothing else. I don't want to hear nothing crazy. I got what I turned it on for. What's that right there? He said, you should pray until you submit yourself to the season that God has you in. Oh, God. So if it takes five minutes, then you got a five minute prayer for that day. You good, you covered. You pray. But if it takes ten minutes for you to get to yes, then your day, that day, you spent the amount, appropriate amount of time in the presence of the Lord that you needed to spend in prayer. If it take you an hour, then that means that you might have to wake up a little early now. Now you're getting into inconvenience. But I thought that was so powerful that we should pray until. We submit to what we know the Lord is doing in our life. Yeah. That'll determine how long. Yeah. Wow. Ain't that meaty? Yeah. Yeah. Can we just take 10 seconds and let that just... Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! Some of y'all have white stuff in the corner of your mouth because it's going to take because it's been a long time. <laughs> You're going to have to stay in there. And, and, and back in the day when they would when they were trying to get us filled with the Holy Ghost, and they would say, you, you, you just come back tomorrow night. You ain't, you ain't got nothing tonight. Yes, sir. He's got to be received. Right. They, they didn't know no better. He's got to be received. Somebody tell the Lord yes. Yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes. Yes. When you close your eyes and really, um, I want you to think about, like you wrote, I, I want you to get an area 
It's one area. Not gonna take you long. Get one area that you know God is asking you for a sacrifice. Most of us is probably going to be in the area of our will. It's probably going to be in the area of your identity. It's probably going to be in, in an area of what is comfortable. Faith stretching. Trusting him stretching. But I want you to get that area in your mind. Get it before him. Whether you fully understand what he's doing I want you to out of your mouth just for about three minutes begin to tell him yes concerning that area because you recognize and realize that he is God and that because he is sovereign and that he knows best my good days I weigh my bad days and this, the lyric goes to talk about although my weary eyes can't see the way I want you to tell the Lord I, I don't understand it I don't comprehend it it doesn't make sense some of you feel like the Lord has you on the scenic route he has you on an extended process and that, that he has forgotten about you but the Lord says I am in this fire with you I, but I need your will Come on, tell the Lord, yes, he wants to hear you make covenant with him, but I'm not moving to the left nor the right. I can't make it without you. I need, come on, tell him, yes, 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 yes. Come on, let the house tell the Lord, yes. Come on, let the house tell the Lord, yes. It's frustrating. The, 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 the frustration of frustration. The irritation of frustration. Just put your hands up and tell the Lord, I don't understand it. I want to get off of this, this process, but I know that you have me in some weird way where I'm at. Come on, tell him my answer is E. Most You told me that more was coming. You've prophesied to me. You've you I've heard all of the word, but but Lord, though I can't understand it in the dark. I, I trust you. I trust you with my career. I hear you, Lord. I trust you with my marriage. I trust you with my age. Some of you feel like you're too old that, that every day you get up, you're losing time on your clock. But the Lord said, tell me, yes. Joblessness, homelessness, friendlessness, associatelessness, education. Tell them, yes, Lord. A real yes. Some of you are so way out in faith that you can't even make it back to comfortability because God has you where he wants you in total dependence and trust in him. Come on. You ain't really got no choice but to tell him yes. Come on, every hand lifted and tell the Lord yes. Come on, pour, pour it while you sit in your seat. I want you to just pour out your worship on him. Come on, pour out your worship on him. Uh, Woo. Yeah, worship moves in. Come on, I want you to tell him about it. Tell him about it. Come on, get that out of the dust box. Hey! I work a job that don't make enough. What are you doing? Hey! I got a business plan in my heart, but I don't have the seed to fund it. What are you doing? Hey, my, 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 see, my, my, my. Somebody tell them, yo, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The call is bigger than my ability to fund it. Yes, Lord. I'm in something. You didn't tie me to something that I don't want to be tied to no more. Tell them, yes. Yeah, I don't want to be with the person that I'm with. I don't like the way my life is going. Even the neighborhood some of you live in is an agitation to you. Tell the Lord yes. Come on, I told you to tell him yes. Come on, tell him yes.
need you. Tell her my life, my life, my life belongs to you. Come on, we get ready to finish. Just don't hold your hand up and say yes. Come here and touch you. Process for him to tell us yes, or for us to tell him yes. Ema kolaba se de de isi to worship you. I need to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Ema satane ne ne. Come on, say that. To worship you, I need to worship you. Everybody say, I need to worship you. Oh, I hear heaven singing that. In my name, I Come on, if you lift it up to him, if you're in a process, to worship you, I need Oh God. Come on, let them be your personal cry. Oh, my city. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say it again. To worship. To worship. Yeah. Come on. What do you do? Yeah. Oh God. The Lord, the Lord says, I'm doing something in your husband. And the Lord told me to tell you that for the next 10 days, he's going to call you. The Spirit of the Lord is going to call you unto himself. And the Lord says that within these 10 days, I'm, I'm going to call your appetite. He said, you ain't even going to go on. If I'm going to call, I'm going to call your appetite from you. And the Lord said, only eat what I tell you to eat. I'm going to take you through a 10 day sovereignty of me. And the Lord says that within this 10 days, you're going to see my hand. The Lord said within this 10 days, I'm going to move on your household's behalf. The Lord said, I have not left you all. I have not forsaken you. He said, but I have your husband in a process. And, and that process is, is, is affecting you. It's affecting you. But the Lord said, it won't destroy you. So I pray for you. I, I pray for your faith now. The Lord said, I need you. I, I need to call you to myself because there's another faith around that I'm, I'm calling your house to. And I need a will. I, I, I need a contrite heart to move what I want to do through your house. I'm going to use your prayer. The Lord says that, that your husband, he's, uh, his feet are in the sand. He's stuck. But the Lord says through your prayers, 
through your intercession and through your alabaster march and even through your dancing this morning. The Lord said, as you were moving your hands back and forth, he said, it was a prophetic sign unto you and unto your household that I was shepherd. And so he said, the, the fix has already been made in your worship. And he said, I want you to rest in me. He said, now rest in me now. He said, rest in me. He said, I promise you, I will not forsake the, the Washington household. But he said, I promise you that I'm coming. He said, I'm getting ready to move faithfulness now. I'm getting ready to move for faithfulness. He said, but within 10 days, you're going to see my hand. He's going to turn it. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Come here, Jamar say. Today, for some reason, I don't even know why he said, but the Lord told me to take that today. It marks a day of pro of promotion for you. Although you have not understood the ways of God and the the withholding of God and the, the limitation of God, he told me to tell you that your faithfulness and and honor of, of the season and of who God has placed you under the Lord said I'm going to do, do, do two things for you he said one of the one of the two things two of the one of the two things that he said he's going to do is, is provide you transportation he said that has has started to eat on you and eat eat at your faith of the Lord said I'm not going to extend that season any longer he says to remember me re remember the remember the principles and the faithfulness that have brought you to this point somebody is going to, to show you favor in the area of transportation he said the second thing that he's going to do is he's going to, to give you stable employment he said that this you told me about two jobs that really disturbed my spirit he said because that's not my best for him and that's not the best for the season but the lord said or oh, be diligent and the blessing of the lord concerning um, employment that is enough money to meet the need of two incomes put your hands up father we we cause this word now to be established in the heavens Father, I thank you that as you establish this young man, that, that, that you continue growing and developing him in the areas that you are growing and developing him. I thank you now for favor that's on his life. I, I, I bless his hands. He needs favor now. And Father, today we release the favor of the Lord. I thank you that he's going to testify of the miraculous and the supernatural uh, chasing him. The blessing of the Lord find you and overtake you in Jesus' name. The Lord says that 
you truly have been in a season of waiting. You, you, in, even in your day, you know that something good is on the horizon, but you can't, can't put your finger on it. And the Lord told me to tell you that your, your season of waiting on this is another level that you know that you're supposed to be living in in living under but you ain't been able to to get the, the pieces together but the lord said today he announces to you that the pieces they're really they're coming together now and the lord told me to tell you that that in your family line there are some people that have not finished processes cousins and nieces that were doing God and life hit them and they lost their stride the Lord told me to tell you that he pronounces over you the spirit of a finisher he said in, in this season of your life he says truly everything that you put your hands to do it is going to prosper and so the Lord told me to call you out to pray for you that you would not waste hear this virtue he said because you've, you've come through a season of your life where you have given to a thing and given to an individual and given to a system and you have not received the, 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 re, the residue or the payback from it he said truly your life has been under the scripture that says hope deferred makes the heart weary or sick but the Lord said he promises you that everything that you put your hands to in this hour is going to work and it is going to prosper and the Lord said you, you, you can no longer wait to exhale he told me to tell you that bad news is not coming I, I, listen I want to tell you this I, the Lord told the church a couple weeks ago that what we do is, is to prepare for bad news we brace ourselves for it to protect ourselves so that when it happens again, we'll be ready. The Lord told me to tell you that the gospel and the word of the Lord is that you don't have bad news coming to you. I want you to close your eyes and put your hands up because you're a woman that's waiting to exhale. And the Lord said today, you don't have to wait any longer. You can breathe because your daddy God is coming to your rescue. Hey! Come on, breathe, prophet. I want you to just breathe. Yeah, right under this anointing, there's a strength coming to you. Just breathe. Come on, breathe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Father, I pray from this one that time moistures. The Lord said, I'm, I'm redeeming what you call lost time. The Lord said you are in a season of vindication and clarity. And for the next three days, he says for the next three days, I'm getting ready to make sense of the last five years. Yeah, he, he said, I'm, I'm gonna make sense of it. And after these three days are over, your faith is going to end a childlike faith that you once had that was beat out of you because of love. The Lord said, I'm going to cause your faith to erupt. And he said, when you run this time, ain't nothing going to be able to take you off track. Come on, give the Lord a wave. Hop here. Come here, Come on, breathe. Come on, breathe. Truly, you have been in a, I mean, he, the Lord told me to tell you, nobody knows. The Lord said, don't nobody, don't nobody know. So what that means is that you, you are in a, in a time where words can't even explain all that is going on in your mental and your emotional. But he told me to tell you that I, I have you in a season I've had you in a season of isolation because I wanted 
some me and you time. But I heard the Lord as, as clear as day when you were walking up here. The Lord said, I'm, I'm calling you out of isolation now. And he said that the, the keys to your next season are really in the people whose hands are being laid on you now. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to look at, look at all them women whose hands are laid on you. It's, it's prophetic. In, in the hands of the one whose hands are laid. I want you to look at, look at them in, in their eyes, boo. Your, you, because of how you were raised and because of what has happened to you in your childhood, you have been your protector. And, and you have had to, as a seated in uh, Sophia's all my life, you, 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 this really has been your life story. But the Lord says, I'm changing your clothing now. I'm, I'm changing your garment now. The Lord says that today marks the beginning of a new season for you. And he said this captivity and this just enough that you are in, he says he promises you, if I be a prophet of God, that today, tr today truly marks the changing of a season, the changing of a struggle, and, and the changing of an aloneness in this cave that you have been in. He says, I got a resource for you. I got employment for you. God is, is ready to do a complete overhaul on your life now. He says, but the key to it is, is, is he says, I need you to open your mouth. What it is that you feel and what it is that you think, you are truly in a time when you're going to have to lay it out. Because now the Lord says, I cannot put new wine in old wine skins. So the Lord challenges you. To lay out what you think and feel so that God can sort through it to hold your next season. That makes sense. Father, we thank you. And we give you honor and praise for this prophet. Oh, la la ma I I I silence this mental torment. Yeah. We speak to that. Yeah. I, this third voice even in your home I see you sitting in a particular area in, in your house and thinking and processing and thinking and processing and, and the Lord says come out of that that I'm, I'm gonna invade my spirit there mm. the Lord says that even even the location of where you live I'm ready to move you from there because at atmosphere wise is fighting against your process the Lord said, I'm ready to do it in you. But he said, I'm starting in your mind. Father, I thank you that this one will not be lost. That she won't be lost to the process. But that she's got sisterhood around her. That she's got family. Father, I want you to re-reveal family. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Father, I want you to teach her family. I want you to teach her the workings of family again. And I thank you that today is a day of miracle for her in Jesus hey in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah oh no 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 get this again if you got a uh, if you got a business if you got an idea whether it got, got paper you got it written down or not I want you to stand if you got something in your spirit that has not um materialized yet so you know you, you're supposed to do something but it ain't, ain't done it yet it has not materialized yet it's materialized